Dear students, I am Dr. Nagraj from Department of Physics, Bangalore Institute of Technology. I hope you all enjoyed my two videos about semiconducting materials and dielectrics. Now let us have a discussion of modern physics and quantum mechanics. Here is the syllabus. In modern physics, first we have to have a glimpse of historical developments, review of photoelectric effect, black body radiation and Compton effect, Planck's quantum theory of radiation, dual nature of light, matter waves and their properties. Next Heisenberg uncertainty principle, concept of wave group and its significance, statement of uncertainty principle, significance of the principle and applications, quantum mechanics, setting up of Schrodinger one dimensional wave equation, wave function and properties of wave function, eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, particle in one dimensional potential well and then probability densities. You know, light is a very fascinating thing and man is trying to understand light in a detailed manner. In past, many physicists tried to explore the behavior of light through their theories. Newton came out with a model called corpuscular model of light. It is actually first particle theory of light. And this theory failed miserably in order to explain several practical observations. Then came Christian Huygen. He had a totally different view. He suggested that light travels as a wave in a medium very much similar to sound waves. In 1801, Thomas Eng, through his famous experiment called Eng's double slit experiment, proved the wave nature of light. In fact, Eng's double slit experiment initiated the debate, that is, debate on wave theory and particle theory of light. The ambiguity of wave nature of light was finally resolved when Maxwell introduced this theory called electromagnetic theory in 1864. This theory had a solid mathematical support. In 87, Hertz experimentally verified the electromagnetic theory and confirmed the wave nature of light. By then, almost all branches of physics such as mechanics, heat and thermodynamics, waves and oscillations, electricity and magnetism, etc. were completely developed and people presumed that physics has reached a saturation point and there is no necessity of new hypotheses. But in 87 itself, Hertz discovered one more property of the light that is photoelectric effect and photoelectric effect in fact reopened the issue. Not only that, many more discoveries such as X-rays in 1895, electron discovery in 1897, radioactivity in 1898, etc made them to come out of the illusion, come out of this illusion, come out of this illusion. Especially black body spectrum, though it was discovered in 1859, was still a mystery in the late 19th century. So physicists realized that Newtonian physics, so whatever the physics developed up till then, do not apply at atomic level. Here I have some photographs. This is Hertz who verified the electromagnetic wave theory, Prontigen, discoverer of X-ray and then J.J. Thomson who discovered electron and Becquerel who discovered radioactivity in 1898. The problem of black body radiation and black body spectrum was a hot favorite topic for the discussion in the later part of 19th century. Many physicists of that time such as Kirchhoff, Lord Rayleigh, Wien, G, Stephen and many more made several attempts to explain this problem but most of them could see only partial success. After the failure of Rayleigh's attempt to explain the black body spectrum using equipartition theory, things became a bit serious. Here we come across with a concept called ultraviolet catastrophe. I suggest my students to refer any modern physics books to know more about ultraviolet catastrophe. Since it is not there in the syllabus, I cannot go in detail about it. Max Planck came out with his famous theory called quantum theory of radiation in 1900 in order to explain the black body problem. This is perhaps the beginning of modern physics because in his theory he had a modern concept called quantization of energy. As expected, Planck's theory did not receive red carpet welcome. Only after Einstein's work on photoelectric effect and Bohr's work on atomic model, people started accepting quantum concept. I hope my students know about photoelectric effect and Einstein's theory of photoelectric effect 
also boasts theory of hydrogen atom. They might have studied these two in PUC. But Compton's attempt in 1920 and observation of pair production in 1932 finally confirmed the particle nature of light. I suggest my students once again to go through any modern physics books to know more about Compton effect and also about what is known as pair production. Physicists initially skeptical about the particle nature of light started accepting it. This is Max Planck, Einstein, Bohr and Compton. I suggest this video for history of modern physics. Also, you can read a beautiful textbook that is concept of modern physics by Arthur Pace. With a brief discussion on the historical developments of modern physics, now let us proceed with Planck's quantum theory of radiation. Dear students, wave nature of light is well established both theoretically and experimentally. Concepts like interference, diffraction, polarization, etc. can be adequately explained on the basis of wave theory of light. But same wave theory fails to explain problems like black body spectrum, photoelectric effect, Compton effect, etc. These things initiated the requirement of a new physics. Max Planck proposed his famous quantum theory of radiation in 1900 and it is the beginning of modern physics. Now, there is no ambiguity about the concept of particle and wave nature in our day-to-day -day life. Classical physics treats particles and waves as separate components. Here comes the Planck's quantum theory. He made two assumptions. The first assumption, the interior of the black body contains tiny oscillators vibrating with certain frequency. Second assumption, during the vibration, energy is emitted in discrete manner. The total energy emitted is E n equals n into h nu, where n is an integer, h is Planck's constant, nu is frequency of oscillations. Based on these assumptions, Planck could derive an expression for energy density. It is of this form. u lambda d lambda equals 8 pi h c by lambda to the power of 5 into 1 divided by e to the power of hc by lambda kt minus 1 into d lambda. Dear students, in Planck's theory, we have the revolutionary concept called discreteness, that is quantization of energy. We next proceed with dual nature of light and matter waves. See, it took nearly two decades for the establishment of particle properties of wave, that is almost from 1900 to 1920. Some of the observations like interference, diffraction and polarization are explained by treating light as a wave and some other problems such as black body spectrum, photoelectric effect, Compton effect, pair production etc. demands the particle nature. Hence, light is said to be exhibiting both wave nature and particle nature. This is known as dual nature. Dear students, nature loves symmetry. Many things are symmetrical in nature. For example, if mass can be converted into energy, then energy can be converted into mass. Similarly, if electric field can produce magnetic field, magnetic field must produce electric field. On the same lines, if you think, if a wave can exhibit particle nature, why not the other way? This idea came to the mind of Louis de Broglie. In 1924, Louis de Broglie propose another revolutionary concept called matter wave concept. According to him, when a particle of mass m is moving with velocity v, then it exhibits wave nature. The wave associated with the moving particle is known as matter wave and its wavelength is given by lambda equals h divided by p that is h divided by mv. So, according to de Broglie, whenever a particle is moving with certain velocity, it must exhibit wave nature. Irrespective of its mass, charge, spin, particle must exhibit wave nature. So, now it is time to understand wave nature of the particle. So far, we gave a lot of importance to understand the particle nature of the wave. Here onwards, it is the other way. We have some more expressions for wavelength of the matter wave. Lambda that is in terms of kinetic energy, lambda in terms of charge on the particle. Here the particle I treated as electron. 
for any other particle you can replace this e by q and apply potential difference and lambda in terms of temperature this equation you can use for any neutral particle such as pro neutrons see observe these equations carefully lhs of all the equations is a wave parameter and rhs will be having one of the particle parameter so when you call something as wave certain parameters will come to your mind for example wavelength frequency amplitude phase time period etc are the wave parameters similarly when you call something as particle some parameters will come to your mind what mass momentum kinetic energy potential difference temperature charge on the particle etc you cannot talk about charge on the wave at the same time you cannot talk about wavelength of the particle strictly speaking there is no term like wavelength of the particle you must call it as wavelength associated with the particle so we have certain parameters reserved for the wave and certain parameters reserved for the particle and de broglie perhaps is the first one to connect these two parameters through well known equations matter waves concept was proposed in 1924 but experimentally verified almost 2 years later by davison germer and gp thompson you know gp thompson is son of jj thompson who discovered electron on the lighter side in his textbook which i mentioned in my previous slide arthur baser says father proves the particle nature of electron and son verifies the wave nature of electron the wave particle duality seems to be their family business after understanding the de broglie concept of matter waves now let us move on to characteristics of matter waves first property matter waves are neither mechanical nor non mechanical you know what are mechanical waves waves which require material medium for the propagation are known as mechanical waves for example sound and the waves which do not require any medium for the propagation are known as non mechanical for example light but matter wave does not come under either mechanical category or non mechanical category second property unlike sound waves and light waves matter waves do not carry energy along with them they do not transport energy from point to point next one they possess two velocities namely phase velocity and group velocity i define these two velocities later on phase velocity is greater than speed of light hence it does not carry any physical significance so therefore we don't give much importance to phase velocity of matter waves fifth one in matter waves there is a periodic variable quantity called wave function the value of the wave function associated with moving body at a particular position x and in space at time t is related to the likelihood of finding the body this is quite important likelihood of finding the body there there means at that position and at that instant of time i will elaborate the property number 5 in detail in my subsequent discussions last property the particles position momentum and many other parameters can be determined using matter wave concept so matter waves tells us about particles particle property like position of the particle momentum of the particle kinetic energy of the particle and many more things in fact matter waves guide us to know more about the particle therefore it is better to call matter waves as guiding waves now comes the definition of phase velocity a progressive wave is given by this equation y is equal to a sin omega t minus kx plus phi where the symbols have their usual meanings phi is actually known as phase term the velocity with which this wave propagates in isotropic medium i hope you know what is isotropic medium is known as phase velocity it is given by v equals omega by k also you can write v is equal to f lambda the value of v that is phase velocity is 330 meter per second for sound waves in air at 0 degree celsius 
3 into 10 power 8 meter per second for light waves in air or free space. So, you can call phase velocity also as wave velocity. Let me proceed. Phase velocity represents the velocity at which phase of any one frequency component of the wave travels in the medium. Look at this diagram. Particle which is present here will acquire this phase only when wave travels this much distance. Take this distance as lambda and take time taken for traveling the distance as big capital T then lambda divided by T is the velocity with which the wave is propagating in the medium and that velocity also tells you about phase of vibration hence the name phase velocity coming to group velocity when two or more waves of different wavelength and different frequency superimpose in anisotropic medium. I hope you know what is anisotropic medium. A wave group is formed. Remember, wave group is formed only when there is a superposition of two or more different waves. The velocity with which this wave group travels is known as group velocity. And that velocity is given by this equation. It is d omega by dk. Let me give a small illustration. This is a wave of certain wavelength. This is a wavelength. Now let me put one more wave on it. Uh, this wave is having a wavelength which is slightly lesser than the first one. This is a smaller wave. This is a bigger wave. When they superimpose, the resultant is like this. So we get a group of waves. So this is an envelope or a group consisting of many component waves. And these waves are having different amplitude. And the whole group moves in a given medium with a velocity known as group velocity. I would rather suggest you to watch this video on this link as beautiful video which explains the concept of phase velocity and group velocity. Dear students, with this I have come to an end of first part of my presentation on modern physics. We have many more things to learn that will come in my subsequent videos. If you have any doubts or suggestions, clarification, feel free contact me on this email address. Thanks for watching the video.